Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In for July 31st, 2020. It's another Vault Friday. We are going to talk about HashiCorp Vault, and we're going to talk about the objective number three, Vault Tokens. This is the last <laughs> of three videos where I'm talking about tokens because there was a lot of ground to cover. So in this one, we're going to talk specifically about orphaned tokens. And we're going to use our knowledge from the two previous videos to sort of tie everything together about tokens. So it's going to be a little more in depth. It's going to be some looking at stuff in VS Code. So I apologize for the podcast listeners. It's probably going to, not going to be that exciting to listen to. Uh, I've also been thinking I should probably publish some of my Vault stuff in a GitHub repository. So I'm going to think on that a little bit and see if I can backfill that to the previous objectives and bring it forward to the future objectives as we walk through the vault certification. I'm probably going to end up writing a vault certification guide based off of these videos. So at some point that'll come out. If you're looking to get certified in Terraform instead, then you'll be happy to know I already have a certification guide for that. And that is available on LeanPub. I will put a link in the description. All right. So before we get any further into the topic, let's check in. How are you? It's Friday. I, I I hope you're excited. I hope you made it through the week relatively intact. Over here at the uh, at the Bellavance compound, well, uh, I've had a headache for three days, which is not great. And apparently they want to put me on a steroid pack, which I've never done before. So I'm a little trepidatious about that. But the doctor said do it. And I guess that's what I'm going to do. So we'll see how that goes. I hope I don't get roid rage. But I don't think it's that high of a dose. I think it's really just to get like the swelling in my head to go down, which I mean, people have made jokes about me having a big head before, but I don't think this is what they were talking about. So anyway, I hope you're feeling good, being healthy and, and have something fun planned for the weekend. Let's talk about the final sub objectives in this objective number three. And we've on just as like a quick review of what we've gone over so far. We described vault tokens. We differentiated between service and batch tokens. We described the root token and why you use it and what its life cycle looks like. We talked about token accessors or accessors. I don't, I don't know how to say that. We explained time to live, which was last week, which was epic. <laughs> time to live was a lot of information. Today, we're going to talk about orphaned tokens. And it doesn't seem like it should be a whole episode, but it really, it's going to tie a whole bunch of things together. And I think you'll see that in a moment. So why don't we jump over to Visual Studio Code on my screen share and... I'll walk you through what I've got going on here. So I have an instance of the vault dev server already running. And I the, I have the root token. I have it copied up here so I can log in as root or I can log in as other tokens I'm going to generate. I also created a policy to allow another token that I generate that's assigned that policy uh, the ability to create new tokens and also create orphaned tokens. So let me jump over to the policy. And it's real simple. The token is an authentication method. So you'll find it in the path auth slash token. And all of these subpaths I have done slash star. So I am granting these capabilities to anything that is at auth token slash something. The capabilities, I'm giving a create, read, update, delete list, and sudo. And you might be like, why do you need sudo? And it turns out one of the reasons is in order to create an orphaned token, you need sudo access to do that. And it kind of makes sense when you think about it, because if I was Joe Schmo, Joe Average, and I wanted to get around somebody revoking my token and all the other tokens I had created, I could create an orphaned token, because now we're getting into the objective. An orphaned token is not revoked when the token that created it is revoked. Normally, you have this parent-child relationship. So if I'm at the root of the tree and I have a token that I got from authenticating and I use that token to create additional tokens and somehow those tokens are, are used to create additional tokens below them, if my token is revoked for some reason, all of those other tokens are also revoked, which means any access I might have granted myself through another token is it's gone. Giving someone the ability to create an orphan token means they kind of have a way around that. They still they, they can't have a token beyond a certain TTL. But if that orphan token has access to create additional orphan tokens, well, you could just see how someone could basically have access forever if you're not being careful about audit logs and stuff. So that is the whole point of the orphan token. So let's go back to what I'm doing here. So I created this policy. And I'm going to create a token. 
So use vault token create. I'll assign it the default policy and assign it the token management policy, which is the name of that policy I created. So let's go ahead and run that down in the terminal window. And it is going to give me a few values. I'm going to need that token ID because the next step is to log in as that token. So let me just make a note of that up here in my code. And I'm going to run vault login. So we'll go ahead and run that. Uh, pro tip, if you've set the environment variable vault token to something, no matter what you paste into this token field, the value that's in the environment variable will override it, which can lead to some weird behavior that doesn't seem normal, but that's well, that's what's happening. Okay, so now I have logged in as this other token and I have the default and token management policies. All right, we're good to go. Now I'm going to create a new token and just assign it the policy default. So I'm creating a child token, basically. All right, I've created that child token. It has a policy associated with it. I'm going to make note of the token accessor because we're going to use that to look up properties of this token in a bit. The next thing I'm going to do is create an orphan token. And the only difference in the command between creating a regular one and creating an orphan is this dash orphan argument. It doesn't take any values with that argument. You don't have to set it to true. You just have dash orphan in there and it will create that orphan token. All right, so I've created that orphan token and let me make note of the accessor here. There we go. Now I'm going to look up both of these tokens because doing vault token lookup is going to give me additional information about that token and I'm going to use the accessor. So I go ahead and do that. This is the first token we created. The important thing to see here is that the orphan value is set to false. So, okay, we know that is our child token. It's not an orphan. Let's now run the same thing, but we're gonna do the accessor for the orphaned token that I created. All right, boom, look at that. Orphan is set to true. All right. so. Now that we've looked up both of those, let's log in as root again. So I'm going to go ahead and do vault login and go grab my root token and drop that down here. And now I'm logged in as the root. And now I'm going to revoke the original token that I created that has that child token and also created that orphan token. So let's do vault token revoke. And then we have to do dash accessor. Well, actually, no, we don't because we're using the token. So when you do vault token revoke, you have two options. If you have the value of the token you want to revoke, you can simply paste that in. If you only have the accessor, you can do dash accessor and set that equal to whatever accessor of the token you want to revoke. So we'll go ahead and do that. And it says success revoke token if it existed. So it doesn't even tell you if you revoked a non-existent token, which is part of that ob, ob wow, I can't say that. obfuscation. Ugh, forget it. It's one of the ways that Vault kind of covers up what's going on in the background a little bit. Okay, so we have now successfully deleted that original token. Let's go ahead and do a lookup for that first token that was a child token. When I do that, I get an error. And it basically says invalid accessor. That accessor doesn't exist anymore, which implies that the token doesn't exist anymore. Now let's look up the orphaned token. Boom. That is still there. Because it's orphaned, it wasn't revoked as part of it, the parent token being revoked. And if I do this other command, if you ever want to get a list of all the accessors that are out there, and then you could look up the properties of each one, of each token, you can do vault list, and then the path is auth token accessors. And that'll give you a list of every accessor that's out there. And it shows me two. One is the root token that I'm currently using, and the other one is that orphaned token. Now, if I want to get rid of that orphan token because whoever created it, I don't want them to have any kind of access anymore. Now I can do vault token revoke and we'll do the accessor argument in there and we'll grab the token value. I hope I'm deleting the right one. Don't delete your root token or the token you're currently using by accident. That could be bad. And we'll go ahead and run that. Now that token has also been revoked. If I do a lookup for it, it's gone. So now I've deleted my orphan token. So that is pretty much the last objective. The very last objective was actually uh, determining use cases for different tokens. And once you understand what the different options are for tokens, the orphaned token service and batch or periodic tokens, and some of the arguments that go in there like TTL, 
you can use that information to make a determination when presented with a use case, what makes the most sense for you to do, uh, what, what makes most sense for you to select when you're creating that token. So hopefully that was helpful. That wraps up tokens. And uh, we're gonna do objective four, not next week, because next week I am on vacation. I'm taking a break from the daily check-in for a week. I was supposed to be away in Cape Cod, but that's not happening. But I am still taking a week of vacation where I just I need some downtime, let this headache go away, all that kind of good stuff. So we'll pick up the week after that on Friday, starting fresh with objective four. And I'm gonna have good VS Code examples like I did for this one. That's, that's gonna be my goal for the remainder of the Vault video series. So that's all I have for today. Hey, enjoy your weekend. It was great talking to all of you, and I hope you have a good week next week, and I will see you on the flip side.